making drill music nowadays is easy. Well, what do you think about that? Hello, Mabu. <laughs> that nigga came out of nowhere. I just seen an interview with Mabu. He was on Academic. He had like 50 guys with him. They all paid. You know, you pay for that. And Dr. Popular Rapper and Music Artist, one of the youngest drill rapper. RPT got the most stars from one hood. d thing, Bando, t mm -hmm. Kenzo, mm -hmm. and Dot. When you growing up, you gotta show people like you not a Dave for them to not play with you. That's reality though. If you come with that soft energy, they gonna it's like they're gonna take advantage of that. I didn't even know Doody Low was there. I'm recording, someone knock on the door, but I open it. This session they put up, I was like, oh, wrong session. Like 15 minutes later, someone else knocked on the door. The hallway light was off, so you can't really see, like, and then when you open the door, the light that was inside the studio, which is LED lights, not even real lights, it goes out a little bit, so you can see a little bit who was out there. And someone got their ski on, so I don't know who that is. And the other second person, it was Roscoe. At the time, I didn't even know it was. Five minutes later, someone that was with them called my mans, saying, oh, we in the studio with end up. And they're like 10 9 deep. All right, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Boy Art Show. I am him. Uh, today I have a very special guest joining me. And that, what up? Good what's up? If you could think of something you did this week, uh, for those who are listening, we are recording on a Wednesday night. So if you could think of something that you did this week, that you would do again over and over, what what would that be? Get high and go to the studio. That's all I really did today. I mean, this week. Studio. I'm not even going to bring them to get high. Shit. Fuck that smoking shit. Studio. And that's it. Yeah. That's all I've really done this week. Why? Because I'm going to improve myself. Mm -hmm. Facts. Just right. to make the music, because it got to be good music. Yeah. It can't just be bad music. You mm -hmm. go to the studio. If someone asks you why you go to the studio to make music, it could be you making music, but it's bad music. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You got to be good music. That's what you got to But it, it improve your, you got to improve yourself. What do you consider bad music? Something that's not going to get repeated. Repeat. Like, let's say if you playing it one time, you won't hear it again. Or, like, let's say, like, play it for somebody that you know, and they don't ask for the song, or they won't hear it them, like, Playing it again or asking for the song, like you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, yo, or like, if you, like, I don't know, feedback from your fans, everything. Yeah. You could tell. So, you consider bad music something that won't be replay value, basically, yeah. is what you consider the bad. The first music. time hearing it is when they present it to you, and after that, it's done. Like, yeah. I, let's say, like, you have made a new song, and you come to people, like, oh, hear this, or whatever. And then after that, it's like, oh, I, I jack it, lying to you. And then after that, I don't even hear about the song again, like, don't even t bring it up again. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of how to make songs that would, would make a lasting impact on people? Got to be catchy. Mm -hmm. And you got to talk about what your fans, because everyone got different type of fans, whatever your fan base like. Because it's always like, it's like, it's the bitches, the drill niggas, whatever. It's like, it's different type of fans. Making drill music nowadays is easy. What, what do you think about that? Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. Fake is now, cause it's so much. Like let's say, like a little nigga that ne that just came out, not even came outside yet, just listening to the drill music. They could make a drill song. Like if you go on, like you see me in these New York drill pages, be posting eight year olds that don't even be outside yet, still in the house do doing drill songs, and they don't sound nice cause they voice, but they be f saying shit that we be saying, cause they mm -hmm. hear the music. That's why it be so easy now, cause there's so much of it now. Yeah. If it, but my rebuttal to that, if it's so easy, there's a lot of people that do it. So why don't the other people that do it um, get popping like everybody else? Is there like a certain Because it's, it's not only the music. It got to be an image. It mm. got to be how you, like, how you move, how you sound, who you with, like everything, where you from, everywhere, like everything. Yeah. Let's stop here real quick. See, making drill music seem easy because the beats are simple and it repeat a lot. And the words usually talk about tough stuff like violence, guns, and you know, all that cool stuff. You can make the beats using special computer programs or find sounds online. The words often sound tough and cool and they're not too hard to write if you know what to say. But even though it might seem easy, making really good drill music 
music that people will like takes more than just knowing the basics. You have to understand what the music is about and be able to talk about real feelings and experiences to make it really good. And like Endot is saying, you have to look the part also. All right, let's get back to the show. Does, does authenticity matter to it? Like, do people got to know, like, oh, this, they know you from your, your, uh, your resume? When I say resume, I mean, like, with your background from the streets or whatever yeah. profile oh, so you got. Oh, that helps too. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And if, oh, you, yeah. if you feel like if you don't have that kind of resume, it kind of turn people away. And Not they every time. Not every time, little Mabu. <laughs> that nigga came out of nowhere. You know, th that's funny. I just seen an interview with Mabu. He was on Academics. He had like 50 guys with him. Ski mask up. They all pay. They all pay. You know he paid for that. You think so? We chill with that's just like I'm not gonna say that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I, I, I see. I know my where opinion. you're going with this, and I think I see. My perspective on that is I think it's just marketing, right? Like he understands yeah, that. Yeah, facts. He's playing a character, and he Word. understands he got to keep this character going, and you gotta. And he make, got money. Yeah, 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 to make it happen. You really, facts. you think he's in college? That I yeah. don't believe. That's you the only thing I don't, that? I don't believe him in college. You don't believe that? No, I don't believe him in college. His parents. Yeah, uh, I, I, no, I don't believe him in college. The reason why I don't believe him is in, he's in college because I went to college and I know what college is like. So when he's in the dorm, oh, you think that's room, fake? It's fake. He has a hotel. <laughs> yes, man. That, this kid, I, like I, I'm studying this kid. I'm like, you're smart. I know you're not in college. You're just fucking with people. But I, but I like it. Make though, it look cause like because he, because he, he a white nigga for me. That's not from the hood. Like not from the hood. He just be fucking with people. Facts. Yeah. Like he's literally a troll. Like literally everything he did, like just pay attention to him. Everything he do is a troll. Gangster. It's like just it's mastermind. But um, I started recently too. It wasn't even like that from the beginning. Like mm -hmm. when he first started doing his music. Yeah. He wasn't doing that. But he started with the UG shit. That's when he started, bro. Mm, I I wasn't I wasn't in tune around there. But not not to focus on my boo. This interview is about you. What do you think worked for you when you started? I'm young. I look different. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by you look different? I'm mad white. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, like, you see Lil Mabu, he You're not white, though. You Puerto Rican, right? Yeah, but my skin tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I'm young. They say I came out of nowhere until a little later. They, for me, they up research or whatever, seen that I was been in music videos or the whatever. Music videos like, and yeah, stuff. I seen like that, Since, like, 2020. Yeah. Seen that. I seen that online. Yeah. Right. You think that helped you being around those those people? Like you, you feel like yeah, you Facts. you were just like being from my hood. Word. Yeah, you you made a comment uh, that I want to just just to pivot real quick. You made a comment that I want to expound on more. You said, um, if I'm not mistaken, this was a long time ago, but I think I'm I still be trolling in the comments probably. No, no, no. You posted. Nah, I was on always being people comments though. Why? I don't know. <laughs> you just you like tro I like trolling too, so I get I it. I think stop that shit though. Why? I don't know. You just, just one day I just woke up and stopped doing it. You told yourself like yo, I gotta stop. Nah, trolling? I never even told myself that. I just matured out that shit. I feel like you just woke up and matured. I don't know. This guy is crazy. <laughs> he just one day magically just matured. I don't know. Come on, bro. I just know that I, I don't even remember me stop doing that shit. I just know that all of a sudden like I remember stop doing that shit. I was like, what the fuck? I don't even do that shit no more. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like every time I see a post that's something, I don't be saying nothing to something on the comments, yeah. comments, none of that. Every time I used to comment, I used to get like a thousand likes on the comment. That's why I used to fake doing that. I used to always do that shit. Wow. I used to be a top comment. Just trolling fucking yeah. with people. Yeah. I respect it, bro. But back to what you said. You said that some of the best draw rappers are from RPT. Nah, I said you even said I said RPT got the most stars from one hood. Boom, boom. That's what you said. Yeah, it was a long time ago, so I don't, I didn't remember exactly. It's our RPT exactly. and DOA. Well, break that down. Like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? B thing, Bando, T Dot, mm -hmm. Kenzo, mm -hmm. N Dot. Wow, upcoming people that's not even up yet. DJ, B Baby Muddy, Justo, Idari, everybody. Okay, but words matter. You know what I'm saying? Niggas be saying shit. Words matter. You said I know you stars. About them niggas, them other niggas you just listed, I don't know if we can consider them stars. And nobody know who they are. Now I know. Too. So to your to to your exact point, you said RPT got the most stars. I'm looking at Brooklyn. Like they got 
people that from one hood. Oh, okay, okay. You, not from one to, to your point, words matter. You from mean one, like from one hood? That everyone living in the everyone if you go outside to the store, you see each other. Oh, type, okay, like, okay, yeah, like yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. chill, like go to each other's house. Mm, that's what I meant. Mm, that's a good point. That's what I meant. Okay, 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 okay. That's a good point. It'd be a complex too, so like it's like yeah, gated. Yeah, yeah. So it's like everyone is like in one. Like, so it's like we from like that's what I meant, but like from one hood, like yeah. we together. Hold on, pause. Put a mic close to you. I won't be able to hear you. Can you hear him, Ace? Yo, yo. Yo. All right, cool. So, um, speaking of one hood, and like, RPT is very small, bro. It's small, but no homo. It's no ditty. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's not small, but it's not big. Like, <laughs> it's like real, it's, it's a lot of, hold on. What happened? What, like, it's not even that funny. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get used to it. <laughs> but, um, this guy is crazy. It's real, like, like, like it's not small. There's a lot of people in there, but it's yeah. real small. Like, it's like how you explain it? Like y'all all know each it? other. It's compacted. Yeah, compact. It's like yeah. real. Like you don't even know if that's the right word. You just agreeing with yeah, me. Yeah, facts. <laughs> it's like real. Like, <laughs> it's like how how you call it? There's a lot of shit in one little room. We got a white person here. <laughs> what's, hey, the, what's the word? Hey, what's the word for that? <laughs> what's the word for the um? Like if there's a lot of shit in one little spot, like. Compacted, right? Uh, oh, yeah, I was compacted. right. I be doubting myself sometimes, man. You I'm really out here smart, yo. I be doubting myself sometimes. I be shitting on these niggas, man. I don't even know it. I don't even be sh- <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, I be shitting on these niggas that I don't even know it. What, what I wanted to know from you is like, man, if you could think of just growing up in that environment, what's something that some valuable lesson that you know you've carried with you throughout your your upbringing that you remember? It could be from. A grandmother, it could be from a homie, it could be from your mom, your pops. Like, do you remember something that you learned from just growing up in that area that has stuck with you throughout? It could be loyalty, it could be, you know, trust. Um, just any valuable thing that you took from that neighborhood. You gotta be tough. Explain. When you growing up, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta show people like you not a day room for them to not play with you. Mm. If you know what I mean, like yeah, yeah, I'm you gotta following. be tough. Like you feel like people kind of test your gangster a lot in that area. And what I mean by gangsters, like Ooh. they test you. Like when human. I was younger and shit, cause when I was born in Towers, but then I had moved out and came back when mm-hmm. I was ten. So it was like I had to get used to having I had to like no. Cause I left when I was five, so I I was still mad young. I was even chilling with people. So when I came back at ten, mm-hmm. for me, it was like I had to get for me. I was still wild young though. I'm still wild young. I'm, I was non turning 10, actually. I was non turning 10. So I was four years I have left with us. So you had to get used to being, used to this new environment. I'm not gonna say people was, was playing like, with me, but like it's, like, it's like, you know how you have a new, like. It's aggressive. F- nah, yeah, like aggressive. Like, y'all don't, y'all, not, y'all don't even know each other like that. Y'all just yeah. started getting to know each other. So it's like, it's not like 100% with y'all. Y'all still get to know each other. So, like, for me, when we play, like, the family is like, just like regular, like, getting to know each other, kind of. You just getting get to know each other. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's aggressive, so you kind of have to, if you, I don't want to use the word soft because it, it sounds crazy to say, but th- that's reality though. If you if you come with that soft energy, they're gonna it's like they're gonna take advantage of that. Exactly. Yeah. So I get I get what you meant by you got to be hard. Pause. Facts. Yeah. No diddy. No diddy. <laughs> we gotta stop this, man. <laughs> I gotta leave Puff alone, man. We gotta stop this. Uh, but. When you when you when you when you uh when you in an environment like that, is it difficult to like escape bullshit? Kind of like what you're saying. Like how how did you survive escaping bullshit? Being you in that environment, you gotta make smart decisions. You can't just have other people pick your decisions for you. Mm-hmm. You gotta know yourself. You gotta trust your gut. Were you ever like? Do you ever feel like you you just were lucky in being around the right people? Where you didn't get sucked, was it suck suck into the BS? Pause. I, mean, I don't. It, know. Um, I be around everybody that do bullshit, bullshit or not. But mm-hmm. when they do that, I'm not around. Mm. Like, Why do you think that is? Like you, you purposely don't be around, or you feel like, 
ordained. Ever since I've been just, rapping, before that, I was just doing whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about once I started rapping, started I had rapping, to wake up and different. stop doing shit. I had to focus on music. Mm -hmm. Of course, because you the money now, right? Facts. Once you start rapping, you become a brand. You the money. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta be smarter than Word. what you used to what Facts. what you used to be, but. Okay, let's stop here. When you have motion, it's important to be careful about what you do and who you're doing it with because your actions can affect your career. Just like how if you play with fire, you might get burned. If you hang out with the wrong people or do bad things, it can ruin your repetition and importantly, your money. People who look up to you might feel disappointed or stop supporting you if they see you doing things that aren't good. So it's smart to stay away from things and people that could cause trouble and harm to your career. Instead, focus on making good choices that'll help you stay successful and respected and that'll help you make more money and that got the right idea. All right, let's get back to the show. The reason why I brought that up is because I still see, you know, young men, I'm young too, so young men like you and myself, making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, before the camera came on, we kind of talked We talked on this a little bit, but I feel like some of the bad decisions is this. <laughs> like people get on this phone, go on Instagram Live, and just be saying anything, or go on Instagram <laughs> and just post anything, right? Nice. And what I mean by that is, you and Duty Low had a back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. about nothing. At least to what it seemed like to me. I it watched the nine, video on but YouTube. It was, it was something. It was nothing with him. But it was something f with you. It wasn't really, it was something, but it was like almost something. It was like, I'm, I'm going to explain it briefly. So, yeah, don't, we, I don't want to go too much yeah, into it, but. But I'm in yeah. the studio or whatever. Three people with me. And I'm recording. Mind you, we situated though. We situated. I'm recording. Someone knock on the door. I open the door, but when you open the door, you have to press a button. So they 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 had to knock on the door. They, uh, they knock, someone knock on the door. I open it. It was someone from Jersey. They come in with, like they had that walking in thinking it was their session. They put up. I was like, oh, wrong session. Go back and they go leave the room. I close them, whatever. Record them. Like 15 minutes later, someone else knock on the door. My man's was recording. I go open the door. I don't know who it. The the hallway light was off, so you can't really see like. It's, it's off, and then when you open the door, the light that was inside the studio, which is LED lights, it's not even real lights, LED lights goes out a little bit, so you can see a little bit who is out there. I'm looking, both of the niggas are shorter than me, so I'm not thinking, I'm thinking it's random, random niggas. I'm not thinking about, like, I don't want to explain it, like, if I see someone that's bigger than me, I'm going I'm to, like, really look, like, be on point of who it is. If, like, to me, it was some little niggas, so I'm not even worried about them. If someone got their ski on, so I don't know who that is, and the second person... It was Roscoe at the time I didn't even know it was because he had just cut his hair and there's a little bit of light of him that's on his body, a little bit on his chin, but you can't really see his face a little bit in the dark. I'm going to just stop and You're very good at details, my man. <laughs> I know. You're very good Cause at details. Because I want y'all to be specific. I want to be specific to niggas. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, yeah, Like, to know I'm not on some day room shot. I feel like I'm there. It's not like, like I knew who I, It's not like I knew who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, I just yeah. did some day room shot. I did as they know who it was. It was mad fast. Once I opened the door, I'm looking. I'm trying to see who it is while I'm trying to think, like, who it is. They're like, oh, wrong room. It walked back. And then when they walked back, they walked in the darkness. So I can't even see them no more. So I closed the door. And I'm talking to whoever I will. Like, oh, I think I was Vasco, whatever. They're like, nah, you bugging my. I'm like, ah, whatever. Five minutes later, someone that was with them called my man's saying, oh, we in the studio with Endot. And started showing everybody I was with them. And they're like 10, 9 deep. After that, what said, we finished the song. After we finished the song, we sent to us, we opened the door, nobody in the hallway, we leave. So his version was complete. I didn't even know Duty Low was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even know Dorilo was there. Because you didn't I, properly see that. I went to sleep, woke up, I see a, a PDL posting the shit. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Dorilo was there? He was there, but I ain't know that. I see it like when a live, oh, I yeah, see the live yeah. him in the studio, whatever, tag, talking like, yo, Nestor, your man did bad. I'm like, bro, what the? I didn't even know he was there. Yeah. And you the first one to go. Roscoe didn't even go on the night. But Roscoe saw you. He saw me, and I saw him too, but I ain't know it was him. And then he's, he's, I had my jewelry and all that. He just had old rogue room and woke up. Same thing that the first nigga said. Wrong and the first room. nigga said, the Wrong first nigga was with BBG. You know, to pivot real quick, um, I want to talk about an interview you did uh, with The Hood Journal. It was a long time ago. That was my first ever interview. Yeah. Yeah, I could tell. You were like young, still fresh. Pause. And... Um, Little Diddy. 
<laughs> and uh, you said something that was kind of prophetic in a way. Like, what you, you mean prophetic? Y'all, prophetic as in like you predicted what to happen in oh. the future. Uh, you you said that D thing was gonna come home shortly. Everyone uh, knew that was gonna happen. All the little fans on TikTok was saying he was doing twelve, whatever thou whatever thousand years, whatever hundred years, whatever they were saying. Mm-hmm. They were saying something. They were saying a hundred and something years, I think, or some shit like that. Did, was that like something that was communicated within y'all inner circle that he was coming home, or did you just you was just saying something at the time? Like you just had faith that he once was the come fans. Home? Everyone was saying that he was wasn't coming home, and we knew he was coming home. Why would we tell him to coming home? They just they gonna think he's not coming home. No, Once I'm saying, how home, did you know he was coming home? Like, did, was that something that was told within y'all circle? We, oh, yeah, but oh, okay. not but like now on some like like oh he's sure like uh, like like little about it for me. Everyone on some regular conversation, shit like oh bro about it for me, bro yeah. about to come home. Yeah, and then uh, he came home. I seen all y'all linked up. How, what was that? At? What was that like? Talk about that. Um, the day of the video shoot. Well, just linking up with him. Oh, after the, he, oh yeah, he's yeah, free. It was, dumb, he was, free it was like he was dumb hype. Yeah, he's dumb hype because he fresh home. Feel me? Just did two years. Everyone he see, he just get hype. What did you and him talk about when y'all first link up? First, I might well say he not my man's, but he like from the beginning he was really my brother man's, like my older brother. Mm. That's how I really knew these things since I was like five because yeah. I always see him chill with my older brother. So like the like not the first thing but like after we talking about it he really talking about my brother and shit like oh he was telling you about your brother yeah facts yeah, yeah, yeah. cause that's really his man like like before like I was rapping or whatever like for me chilling with him or whatever he was really with my brother mm-hmm. since they was like 13, 12, 11. nah but cause when I listened to the chill record yeah that's what it sounded like you know you weren't dissing you weren't uh you weren't on a drill beat it was more like a Jersey bounce kind of beat facts. at parts. Uh, at what? At parts. That was not the whole the whole beat. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the whole. Like, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Two parts and that shit. That was. Yeah. Crazy. So is that the route that you're leaning towards? Mm-hmm. Why? Why exactly that route? That's what's going crazy right now, and also that sexy drill shit. But I never did a beat on that sexy drill shit. I'm gonna try though. I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try. Yeah. Are you doing that because you feel like um, drill is dying down? Is that is that what, why you're doing that? And you wanna like? I'm not gonna say it's dying down, but. Mm. It's like people getting tired of that shit. Mm. Big, I feel like it gotta be a different sound of drill. Cause you see how as I go on them came out, it was a whole different drill sound. Mm. That was going crazy. I'm not saying it's not going crazy now, mm-hmm. but like that was like a whole new sound for drill. Mm-hmm. We need another one of those, another different, a different sound of drill. Cause at first there was the Brooklyn drill, mm-hmm. and then when the Bronx drill came out, we started the sample wave, mm-hmm. and then. And then now we got the jersey, and then jersey number started like band man and all that started the drill mm-hmm. shit. I mean the jersey drill shit. Mm-hmm. And then as that go came out with the dark New York drill. The dark, yeah, yeah, I know shit. Yeah, that golf Batman shit. Facts. Yeah, that's that use was doing. Like it's different type of sounds of drill. Mm-hmm. And you feel like I mean I don't think uh, the chill song I don't think it represents drill at all. Like it, I think it's just like a like a melodic. I don't even know how I would categorize that, but I don't think it's drill at all. I don't think it resembles drill at all. Maybe I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it, re- it resembles drill at all. I, I don't even know what what I would put that as. But um, so you're doing R&B? half R and B, R and B, and nigga, relax. Sick of saying R and B. R and B is singing, nigga. You gotta oh, really I'll sing. <laughs> you gotta really sing. But I like that, man. So half drill, half melodic shit, club kind of shit, just. Right. For the women, for the bitches. <laughs> um, what do you want people to take take away from this? Like, what, what's your goal? And I'm doing it better or as good as niggas out here that's older than me. Mm-hmm. I like that, man. I think uh, you got your head in the right space. Stay away from stay away from bullshit. For sure. Because bullshit going to come, come your way. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, the day got to end. So, mm-hmm. um that was, some, <laughs> that was some gorilla shit I just said. This is some gorilla shit. <laughs> I like it, man. On some chill shit. On some chill shit.